Tonight in Precision TV rero nkuko musanzwe mu bimenyereye tugenda tubazanira abashyitsi batandukanye twenda tubazanira abatumirwa batandukanye uyu munsi rero nabo dufite abashyitsi rwose umushyitsi turi buze kuganira Isabella uh, from uh, Canada and Australia at the same time uh, she will be with us in our, uh, our show today of course this is Precision TV if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe kugira ngo ujyubona ibiganiro byose welcome to the show uh, turaje none tubagezeho uh, umushyitsi wacu ndetse anatwibwira ku buryo uh, burambuye uh, she's going to uh, introduce herself and then we will go ahead and start our show thank you so much guys for being with us uh, welcome to the show Plutino. I am from Australia, Brisbane, Australia. I moved there about a year ago from Canada and I'm here in Texas, Austin, Texas to uh, for this interview All and, right. yeah, and a bit for work. So, uh, How did you see uh, Austin, Texas? How do you feel in general compared to uh, Australia? In Australia, um, the people are a little more cold so there's not as much um, interaction, not as many people that you meet on the streets who want to ha have a conversation with you. Um, coming to Texas, I wasn't sure. I heard everyone was saying Austin, Texas is so nice, but I, I hadn't traveled to America much, so I wasn't sure what to expect. I, I was just worried there'd be guns everywhere, and I wasn't sure what I was coming to, but I love it here. It's very friendly and much, much similar to Canada. Okay, so it seems like today we're gonna learn uh, different, uh, like three or four cultures. She is from Canada, but uh, now she's living in Australia. Today we're in Austin, Texas. It's three things at the same time, and also he's gonna—I mean, she's gonna share with us uh, the experience that uh, she already have here in Austin. Mm, yeah. Um I think the first night I came and I was a little worried about going out on my own because I wasn't sure how it was going to be or, or what I was even going to do. And right on the first day, I made so many friends on the way and people were on their way to the museum and I, I just joined in and, and they were very welcoming and going out to get a bite to eat and you can stop and talk to anyone. And one of my favorite experiences here so far, I was just looking around. I was like, ah, oh, I know there was a convenience store around here. I'm not sure where. I was just looking and some lady came and said, you look lost where can I help you find and I said oh That's I'm so trying good. to I know I was like amazed that she came and uh, could see that I was looking for something and she walked me to the to the convenience store so all right you see guys welcome to Austin Texas mm -hmm. feel that uh, she already have some uh, beautiful experience mm -hmm. uh, which uh, we always feel like it's home when you are in Austin Texas or anywhere in US I hope that you're gonna feel that experience or uh, share with us uh, why uh, do you think uh, maybe people should travel like the way you did? Uh, Why do you think it's uh, m maybe important? Uh, I think travel is so important because it's the only way really I think to introduce perspective without having to live or be brought up in a certain uh, area or under a cer certain circumstance. I think you can travel and broaden your mind as much as build empathy and build compassion towards different situa uh, situations. and. It's great to try new food and try new things, meet new people. It's just a great way to get more, uh, better understanding. Of yeah, uh, uh, just real, uh, I mean, real quick, uh, you mentioned about food and, uh, you know, Austin, I, I know Austin has a lot of kind of food. Uh, did you try any uh, cuisine from Austin? Uh, unfortunately, I, I came here and I said I was going to try barbecue, but I didn't. Uh, my favorite place I ended up eating at was an Italian restaurant and I love Italian food but they did a really good job there and again the people the people make the experience so I am my uh, grandparents were born in, in Italy mm -hmm. and they moved over both of them moved over to Canada during World War two mm -hmm. so I was raised Italian with a bit of culture and uh, a lot of respect and eat all your food and don't let anything go to waste and okay. um, respect the privilege of living in Canada with uh, the opportunity to be in a safe and secure nation and um, I think for Canada I think I'm pretty proud to live there because everybody's very um, 
welcoming and very politically correct and um, there's not a lot of discrimination that I see and growing up I, I was immersed in a bunch of different kinds of people and cultures and I never saw any differences um, so I'm pretty proud with that as um, That's very good. yeah I don't know all around Canada but growing up in Toronto Ontario I think um, we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, speaking to uh, uh, like uh, discrimination and, uh, and everything, uh, le let's go back to Canada and Australia. I know here in the U.S. it's a little bit different because of different race, different people, different yeah. immigrants. Uh, I, I, I know that Canada as well has yeah. uh, different uh, Im uh, immigrants. Uh, how the country like or any other uh, resident treat like any kind of immigrant coming to their country. Right. Uh, in Canada, we're very welcoming with immigrants, especially with having Justin Trudeau um, work our province. He was, um, he did a really good job of, of making programs and, and coming up with plans to have refugees um, have a home and food to eat. And there are so many people who are opening up their homes and their families were welcoming refugees and immigrants into their home uh, until they were able to find sufficient living circumstances. and. Um, it, it doesn't all. It doesn't always all work out, and and there's still so so many cases of people who are displaced. But I think that the effort was definitely there, and there was a lot of care and a lot of love. And people would have signs outside of their houses saying, "We accept immigrants." Like, wow, that's, it, that's so you good. walk to work and you see these signs on people's homes, and you're like, "That's a good person right there." So, which part of Canada are you from? Uh, uh so I'm just outside of Toronto, Ontario. Um, but I went to university in a town called Waterloo, Ontario. So that's where I was seeing a lot of signs and um, a lot of the support was in Toronto and um People from Toronto, welcome, welcome to the show. Huh? Yeah, hey, welcome. <laughs> All right, we will be right back in the, let's start just take a little bit a uh, little bit of break. Uh we will be right back. Hey. All right. Welcome to the show again. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It's Precision TV. You just uh, click there on the subscription button and don't forget to uh, push right there on the ring bell so that you can see all the videos that we post right away. So I'm here still with my guest today. People, we want to know like, what is your first name and your last name? Because yeah. I don't want to leave the show. People will be still asking me, what was the name again? You know, yeah. I want to make sure I, I got your first name and last name. Yeah. Not only me, uh, everybody, including uh, my cameraman. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, everyone calls me Bella, but oh, my... Bella. That's what yeah. I mean. yeah. But my full name is Isabella Plutino. Isabella, Isabella. Let's greet all, all Isabellas and Bellas. I know I have a, someone called Bella uh, from Australia. Bella, how are you? I say hello to Bella. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, uh, while we were talking about immigration and immigrant, how the countries take, uh, I mean, take care of the immigrant. I know that you already mentioned that Canada is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, immigrant, Australia as well, US as well. And uh, let's go ahead and see like, uh, what do you think like the word, the entire word should uh, do about the immigrant? Because uh, this time people are uh, think differently about the immigration or about immigrant what do you think the world should do or should support uh, uh, focus on the immigration purpose i think um immigration becoming so large um is definitely affecting communities some people who aren't used to the idea yet discriminators mm -hmm. it's a challenge I think globally and an example I can think of off the top of my head is for Australia for example the people um, that I've noticed I'm not I don't want to generalize but mm -hmm. the people maybe in communities where they grew up the way they are they like their country to stay the way it is mm -hmm. I'm very hard-headed about that mm -hmm. and I think one of the biggest issues is the people not willing to accept immigrants as much as the government is to do their part so in Australia I think we have pretty good rules um, you can be an immigrant and or a refugee and come into the country for free and give uh, be given a home and uh, an allowance or a payment um, to support you until you're on your feet. You so can work as well? 
Uh, yeah, you, job yeah. And start working. you can, or there's a program if you if you aren't ready to get a job or um, you can't work, they the government pays you a certain amount every month, which is a great program, and I think mm -hmm. the government really is doing their part, especially just by letting people into the country. Okay. It's very good open door policy for refugees in in parts of Australia that I'm aware of, um, but I think the negative aspect is when you get the hard-headed people who yeah. want everything to stay the way it is exactly. and they're not as open to uh -huh. welcoming other um, nationalities which yeah, is and it's, that's general. It's, a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. The biggest challenge of today is it's just the in-between. It's The governments are starting to work more towards doing their part, okay. um, their due diligence to take care of the people of the world but I think it's just going to be a transition. All right, all right. Let's say, okay, welcome again to Australia, welcome again to Canada, welcome again to US, especially here in Texas yeah. uh, uh, again let me uh, ask you uh, it's gonna be an interesting question if you were somebody who wanna uh, maybe travel or who uh, maybe wanna live uh, a certain time a certain amount of time where do you feel like you can live beside Canada beside Australia and beside as well uh, you, uh, I mean US yeah where, where uh, what, what other place do you feel you can live oh uh, I feel like I could definitely live in parts of Europe I've always wanted to live in uh, Europe uh, Italy Europe. Oh. Italy in particular Italy is just so beautiful and and the people and the culture is so nice I've I've been to Italy a couple times and one great memory from there is um, seeing lost people and <laughs> they were saying oh like La Playa La Playa like the beach <laughs> and I was like oh the beach I'll take you and they couldn't understand me at all and I couldn't understand their Italian language and I walked them all the way down to the beach and then we spent the day together and okay. we were just enjoying each other's company but we couldn't communicate we couldn't talk to each other so. mm -hmm. all right let me come back like you said uh, you can go to Italy your your grand grandpa that from Italy and um, your mom as well uh, that I will say that that we stay like your like your country what other place beside Italy since you already have the roots over there already mm -hmm. uh, what other places in the world where you feel like yeah, I, I want to visit this place, just to visit. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of places um, in Asia I think I'd like to uh -huh. visit, especially um, on my list. You know, I'd love to see Laos. I'd love to see um, Thailand. Well, you know, Thailand. The, it's okay, a basic Thailand. one. Everyone yeah. goes there, but i just never seen yeah. it, and, and I'd really like to experience that. But I have been to Vietnam and Cambodia, mm -hmm. and I had been to a, uh, Malaysia. Yeah. Wow, so I've wow, seen wow. A, a fair bit. I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to see so much, but um. Uh, all right, this is Precision TV. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Uh, we are here in Austin, Texas, where we were blessed to have uh, uh, one important guest who were able to come on our show, and uh, uh, we are almost done. I, I have just two uh, challenge question, which I will uh, ask you before we finish our okay. interview. Right. But let's go ahead and uh, maybe. Uh, people will uh, have some goals and uh, uh, what do you think everyone should have? Uh, what do you think uh, uh, about um, having a goal in your life? Because as I see you as a young lady, uh, I feel like you came in US for work and you already like, you know, in your career, on your age. I know there are a lot of uh, ladies, young ladies still struggling uh, from even to finish even the university, high school, college, what the message that you can give to these uh, young people? For young people, I think there's two very important parts to master and one of them is hard work. Hard work. You always, no matter what you're doing, you put hard work in and success will follow, always. Mm -hmm. Hard work for the people, hard work for yourself, hard work for the businesses that you work for, and you'll see success. And the other part is always have an open mind, and that involves listening. And anytime you're speaking or implementing anything from yourself to others, you're already infringing on people's what they can give you and what they can offer you. And the listening is where you learn. And the listening is where you understand people, you understand culture, you understand aspects of life. And without that, you're, you're never going to learn. Oh, so. 
That's yeah. important. Oh, yeah, that's a very good one. Very good one. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bella. And uh, uh, are, we, are we also go and jump on my ch uh, for our first question challenge? Yep. So uh, speaking to you, I see that you are very uh, clever. Mm. You look clever and you obviously you are. Uh, what, what, makes you, uh, what makes you who you are right now? Like, who inspired you? I know it may be still there or you might not even achieve your goal, but who inspired you to be who you are right now? My inspiration comes from um, just anyone who I can look at in any instance at any time and be inspired. It's, it's the people I meet on my journeys, like the people like you that I meet along the way. Um, you know, famous people who do really amazing things. Just kind of anyone. I take bits and pieces from everything. So it's... Uh, what, what thing do you feel like uh, someone can do uh, for you and you feel like, oh, this is so good. This has never happened to me. What, yeah. what, what, what do you think it is? Or what do you feel like, I never had this experience, but I wish someone can do this for me. Uh, I feel like I get the experience sometimes. I'm not going to say I've never had it, but my favorite experience that, that I wish to engage with other people is um, when they are very genuine and they listen really well and they want to know about me and they want to share about themselves and and uh, learn with me, grow with me. Uh, all right. I know when uh, we're in a childhood, like this age is from 10 all the way to 2, mm -hmm. uh, all kids has something like uh, games that they do in their normal life. Yeah. Uh, depend on where you are grown, depend on where you were born. Uh, which, uh, which of those things have you done? Oh, like games growing up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. The childhood games of uh, uh, trouble. <laughs> oh, man. My brother and I used to always play Mario Brothers, the video games. Video games. Yeah, we play our GameCube. My, and my mom would never see us. We'd be hiding in the basement playing GameCube all day, all night if we could. Uh, so that was one big thing. And uh, tag, hide and go seek tag. Mm -hmm. You'd hide in the neighborhood with the kids. And, and if the person who's it sees you, they have to touch you. And you have to run away before they can tag you. So that was uh, my favorite Okay. Game. The last challenge question would be like, what, what two countries that you know in Africa and their capital city? Um... Kenya, Nairobi, where my best ah, friend Ah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Kenya, Nairobi. Yes. I have friends from there, yeah. Oh, okay, Indian cool. friends. A lot of them come from, from Kenya, Kenya. Okay. and then move, uh, move from India to Kenya uh -huh. when times were a little rough, and then from Kenya to Canada. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Kenya, it's a, an East African country over there, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they visit all the time, mm -hmm. so they always tell me that I'm going to Kenya now. Okay. And uh, Rwanda. Rwanda, yes. And then the capital, Kigali. Oh, yes, yes. Let's say hi to the people from Rwanda Hello. over there in Kigali. So <laughs> we are very blessed to have Bella on our show. And we are welcoming you also to keep following us and subscribe. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, this is Precision TV. You just go there on YouTube. You write Precision TV. Then you click on the red button. Uh, subscribe. Yeah, subscribe for, uh, for that so that you can see and watch more videos. Oh, Bella, it was very nice to be with you. Oh, yeah. But before you leave, yep. I have another surprise question. Okay. You're going to tell me, what do you like about your mom? Ah, uh, I like her business ethic. Mm. Very hardworking. So she does business? Oh, yes, yeah. Mm. Very hardworking woman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that means she inspired you then? Oh yeah, she's inspired me. She always taught me to do a job right the first time, always do the best I can for every job that I do, um, otherwise there's no point in doing it. So. Okay, people, uh, maybe a uh, student when they're still in high school, they always feel like, oh, I want to be this, I will, I will be doing this. What was, your ma what, what was in your mind that you were, uh, you were like, oh, I love this, I want to be this? Oh man, I didn't know. I never knew and I never guessed. Um, and that question was so hard in school because I was like, am I supposed to say firefighter like everyone else or ballerina? Like, I don't know what to say. I just always wanted to be myself and be better of myself every day. So. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What will you say uh, you're going to be uh, like, 
when do you say that I am successful? Do you have any level of maybe feeling like, okay, me personally, I will be successful if I am here, if I am there, if I achieve this? What, what is your successful time frame, I mean timeline? My rate of success is um, finding my strengths, which is, you know, it may be difficult for many people because a lot of the times finding your strengths and your weaknesses, you don't always want to look yourself in the mirror and admit to yourself what, okay. you, what you really are. Um, but I think finding your strengths, working with what you're really good at, mm -hmm. even if you're not sure of what it is yet, okay. even if you know that you just are good with people, you care about people, you start there and you just do jobs or find jobs that you find yourself expressing your strengths. Mm -hmm. And from there, I think everything just falls into place after that. Wow. wow. Yeah. What, what, what is your degree again and what did you study? So I went to university only for two years. I didn't finish, okay. but I went for, um, it was a Bachelor of Arts. So it's a variation of courses. So I took okay. world issues and a little bit of computer science and okay. a little bit of everything. So I, I got bits and pieces of it, but most of my experience is in the workplace. All right, all right. It was so nice to be with you. Oh, yeah. And uh, do you have anything maybe you can tell our followers before we uh, shout out the Camille? Yeah, well, first of all, don't forget to sus subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just thank you for having subscribe me. Subscribe where? Oh, to Precision TV, uh, of course. <laughs> of course. Exactly, yeah. Um, and yeah, just uh, thank you very much for having me. Well, of course. I'm very of appreciative course. to be able to connect with people from yes. other parts of the world. Uh -huh. And I'm happy to hear your experiences as much as you've wanted to hear about mine. And, uh -huh. and thanks for having me. All right. Thank you guys for following me, for following Precision TV. Bella was a nice person to be with. And Bella, do you think if I call you over there in Australia for another interview, maybe, do you think you're going to uh, receive my call? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for being with us. Uh, I should ask her a lot, but we, we don't have enough time. Bella is uh, leaving right now, but we are happy that uh, you were able to follow our show. And Bella, thank you so much. Yes, of course. Thank you. All right. Trero reka dushimire mwego mwese mwakomeje kudukurikirana iyi yari Precision TV ni kiganiro cyanyu cya Precision Lifetime mwabibonye yuko ari ibintu byiza cyane aho twari turi kumwe n'uyu mutumirwa wacu wagiye dusangiza byinshi mu mico ndetse na experience cyangwa se ibintu yagiye abona hano muri Texas ndetse nibyo dusangije kuva muri Australia ndetse no muri Canada Isabella thank you so much for being with us for those who are following us it was a pleasure to be with Isabella where she was able to share experience here in Austin, Texas, as well in Canada, Australia, where she lives right now. It was so amazing. Thank you guys for following us. Thank you for those who are already subscribed. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, I will say subscribe just and remember to turn on your, uh, to turn on your uh, notification bell. Please do so so that you can see all our videos. Thank you so much, guys, for being with us. My name is Desiree, of course. Thank you, and uh, be blessed, and God bless you.